Let's take a look at some of the biggest movers in the market right now. You can see uh, Nectar Therapeutics. Well, that's leading the S&P 500. It's up 11% right now. Positive news on a key treatment for tumors. Advanced Micro Devices up just under 2% after announcing a partnership with Samsung. And Tom White will join us later to break down the details on that deal. On the downside, Centene is down about 10% after Humana said it won't be making a bid for the company. And look at the casino stocks. There's MGM and Wynn. Both are down as the U.S.-China trade tensions continue. They're hanging over this market. And you can see those names are down in particular. Well, right now we're speaking with Melissa Armo, founder and owner of the stock Swoosh, because she is feeling a little bit uh, bearish these days. You actually are saying, do not buy the dips this summer. No. Why not? Absolutely. And I wore red today to signify the shorts, <laughs> because today the market fell. We've been in this kind of setup where we'll gap down in the morning. We'll have a fake rally and then we'll drop and we'll end up closing lower. That's what happened Friday. That's what happened a bunch of days last two weeks. And now today we'll see where we close. But people are getting killed because they are buying these previous support levels, which did in the past hold. They did in the past hold. However, right, right now we're in this environment that is very volatile and expect the volatility to continue pretty much probably for the rest of the year. But this summer, the market is ruined as far as I'm concerned and will not make brand new all-time highs this summer. It's not going to happen. What you, not. So, you, you know, you wrote in your note, uh, to us saying smart money is not buying this market. That's right. So what's the smart money doing? I know you have a stock pick that might weather the mm -hmm. storm here, but what's the smart money really doing in this kind of environment? Well, first of all, you have to look at the environment that we're in. We were talking about Thursday night. The market fell post-market in the after hours around 8 o'clock when Trump came out and tweeted about the Mexican tariffs. Yep. And because we have all the Chinese tariff issues going on, when, when you have things like that and talk about smart money so people understand, when I'm talking about money, I'm talking about institutional money. That's big, big hedge funds, big, big traders. I'm not talking about retail traders. I'm talking about huge positions that move stocks. So if you are wanting to, to follow that money and you are, you're the smart money, you're saying, wait a minute, a tweet can come out at 8 o'clock at night and move the market like that right. back off, okay? And that's what people are saying because even though people like to invest when there's, first of all, funds can shorts, just so you know. So people right. are taking short positions. But second of all, also, you don't want to lose. And when you have that much money on, you can't be as nimble as an active trader. So you need to be certain of the directional bias if you're taking something. And right now, there's too much uncertainty. People aren't exactly sure where we're going to go from here and when these tariff issues are going to get resolved. So you mentioned cash and you mentioned shorting. Mm -hmm. You said even Facebook would have been one that Facebook, you would have shorted. Yeah. How about now? It's sold off. I mean, what names would you short? Well, Facebook today was it? a short as a day trade. It opened and swooshed right out of the gate. Fell huge today. And again, so did Google. All of these things, it was another problem for this year. We said at the beginning of the year, the FTC is coming out and they're going to investigate these tech companies. And when you look at the market, right. they move a lot of the market. So if they get investigated and they have all these antitrust problems, well, what's going to happen then? They're a big part of the market, Apple too. Now, Apple has been hanging on, but overall, I felt that Apple is lower. And so when you look at these stocks, you say, well, gosh, it's so hard to short some of these companies because they've been beasts, beasts in the market when you look at 2016, yes. 2017, and 2018, people made a, money, a lot of money going long these tech stocks, but it doesn't last forever. And the short side won't last forever either. I wonder if it's going to change, you know, in September or December or next year. I mean, right now, you know, you sound so cautious, right? And, Very. Um, do you think that's going to change? I mean, does it get better? Well, it will get better if for some reason, maybe the Fed will lower rates. Who knows? That would maybe show some optimism a little bit. Or what if one of these issues gets resolved with tariffs? Now, right. the way that I'm looking at it is, the, as far as the, the Mexican tariffs go, I would hope that that can be resolved. I don't really know if that's going to be resolved soon. A lot of that has a lot to do with the stuff that's going on with immigration. That's more of a political political uh, tactic that Trump has taken with that. As far as the Chinese tariffs things, I don't think that that's going to get resolved in 2019. But let's just say it does get resolved, whether it's 2019, 2020, 2021, whenever it does get resolved, I believe the market reaction will be very positive. And remember a couple months ago, people were saying, oh, this is going to be a sell in the news event when, when tariffs come out. Right. And I thought to myself, no, it was. And I didn't think that then when we were up at the highs. And I definitely don't think that now because it would be positive once it get resolved. But nobody knows when it's going to get resolved, just like nobody knows when Trump is going to tweet something that could affect the market in a positive way or a negative way. Nobody right. knows. I mean, he definitely has a market moving power. 
Uh, talk about Disney. That's one that you like. Year to date, it's up 20%. We have Disney Huge. Plus. You have the theme parks. It's all about Star Wars. You have movies. Uh, what are your thoughts on Disney? It's up 20% so far this year, but you think this is a momentum player? It just keeps going? I like Disney. That, when you look at Disney, and you look at the, again, I do technical analysis, but when you look at the chart of Disney, and you look at the sell-off the market's had from the highs of May, and you look at Disney, you say, wow, Disney is holding like a rock. Now, I'm not right. saying Disney doesn't fall from here, because, again, I think the overall market is, is drifting off. So Disney might drift off a little bit, too, but I definitely would not short Disney. If you absolutely are desperate to go long something, I would say Disney is very, very strong. I like it. It had that huge move when they came out. They're going to end up owning a big chunk of Hulu. Right. They're, they're creating all this content for themselves, yeah. and I wouldn't be surprised if Disney does make a new high, and Disney can make a new high in the next earnings, even without the market. Disney doesn't need the market, and that's what I like about specific things right now. If you're going to go long something, even if you're going to short something, but if you're really going to go long something right now, it has to be stock specific. There has to be a real reason why you love this thing and you want to buy it. technicals, fundamentals, all of it. And Disney's got all that going for it. And it's held out well with the market falling. I believe that it will. I believe the number for Disney is 200. And even though that seems very far away right now, yeah. it could do it overnight in a gap. It could do it on one or two more earnings calls. Disney is strong. And I like that stock. And I just love the way it's held up with the market falling. Even today, market gaps yeah. down. Disney's like, oh, it's just kind of sitting there. Doo -doo -doo. Right. It's true. Uh, yeah. it's somewhat, it seems to be somewhat recession proof. Yes. Uh, when you're doing all your charting, I know um, you, you're watching stocks closely for support levels or whatever. Is there anything else you're keeping a keen eye on? Do you have like five stocks that you're following closely that you're not recommending? But what stocks do you, you wake up in the morning and you check them first? Which ones do you Well, I do at? check the tech because a lot of it moves mark. I check Apple because it's a big percentage of the QQQs. I check the, the tech stocks. I check Google. I check Amazon. But I also check the banks. And here, and, and I was listening to your previous guest talk about yeah, banks. Mary, I got to yeah. tell you. He likes them. No, I don't like them. I okay. don't like them. I disagree with them. I'm sorry to say. I definitely is one of the things that's making me think that the market is lower because when I look at these banks, I say, gosh, they look not so he good. He likes the regionals. Well, again, he didn't want to say exactly the names, but when I look right. at the big ones, the big boys, Goldman yeah. Sachs, J.P. Morgan Chase, Citibank, Wells Fargo, when I look at those charts, I say, uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. I would not be buying those stocks right now. When the banks are lower, it's really next to impossible to have the market hit up over the highs. You're not going to have right. the market at new highs in banks like this. The, if the banks are down, what's, you know, we're I was going to yeah, move the market. Without tech, the financials. It, right. Yeah. I get what you're saying. Yeah. All right. Melissa Armo, founder and owner of the stock swoosh, breaking it down and looking at some of these technicals. Coming up next. Thank you very much. Coming up next, I'll sit down with the CEO of Soliton to talk about the company's latest FDA approved tattoo removal device.